What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwid, and I am back again with another fantasy football preview as we head closer to the 2014 season kickoff this coming up Thursday on NFL Network, and that is going to be between the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. But today, guys, what I want to talk about is the fantasy football wide receiver position, and more specifically, what I want to talk about are guys who are going way lower than they should be in your fantasy football drafts. So what we're going to focus on today are six wide receivers who I believe are great values where they're currently going. And I'm going to show you where they're currently going in average drafts on ESPN. And I'm going to talk a little bit about them and why I like the situation. So let's start off at number six on my list. And that is Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver, Mohamed Sanu. Now, Mohamed Sanu is not necessarily a guy that I would be too excited about if it weren't for the situation that he's in. Now, Sanu is a guy who is coming into his third season in the NFL. This past year, he did get 455 yards receiving and two touchdowns. He scored a total of six touchdowns over his first two seasons, so nothing great. But Mohamed Sanu is stepping into a situation where he could perform decently. Now, the situation is that Marvin Jones, who is currently the team's wide receiver two behind, of course, A.J. Green, he is actually going to miss at least the first four weeks of the regular season with a broken foot. So that means that Mohamed Sanu is going to see the field a lot. Well, at least if he can prove that he deserves it. And my opinion is that Mohamed Sanu is definitely the second most talented wide receiver on the roster. We'll see if he performs to that level. But the thing is, is that his positional average draft position is 82. That means that he is on average the 82nd most drafted wide receiver. That means he is going undrafted in almost every single league. So the reason that I like Mohamed Sanu, like I said, is that I believe you can draft him with the last pick of your fantasy football draft and at least have a potential for somebody who could do decently. Now, like I said, Mohamed Sanu is not a rock star. He's not going to be the guy that uh, is this year's Julius Thomas and breaks out as a top five player at his position. But Mohamed Sanu is definitely a guy who has enough skill to at least contribute, at least be get a, a decent depth for you. And if somebody does get injured at the beginning of the year at your wide receiver position, at least he can give you a bridge uh, between when you uh, when you that injury occurs and when you're actually going to need to replace him. So. Again, Mohamed Sanu, basically no risk. I love that. And he does have the potential to be the starter on a team that is expected to be a pretty decent offense this year in Cincinnati. Moving on to the number five receiver on my list, and that is Kenny Britt. Now, Kenny Britt is now a member of the St. Louis Rams. I don't understand why he's going off the board as late as he is, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that he he had an absolutely atrocious season this past year in Tennessee. I mean, he was dropping everything. He was a pain in the ass off the field. He was just awful in terms of his work ethic and things like that. But he is now back together with the coach who drafted him, Jeff Fisher, in St. Louis. The other thing that I am, I was a little bit surprised to hear this, but it's the reason that I like Kenny Britt this year is that he is the only receiver on this roster right now who has consistently ran with the, the first team in offense this preseason and throughout training camp. He's the only guy. That's looking past Tavon Austin, it's looking past Brandon Gibson, uh, it's looking past a bunch of guys who were actually productive in the past. So I think that Kenny Britt is the kind of guy who has the physical skills still. The question is, does he have the determination, does he have the, the uh, desire, I guess, to actually be a productive wide receiver in the NFL again, or is he just going to go ahead and let it completely slip away by just being a complete idiot? I don't know. I think that given the fact that his positional average draft position is 67, I think that he, again, is a guy like Mohamed Sanu, who is going undrafted in most leagues, that could potentially give you a little bit of spark. I like Kenny Britt better than Sanu because I believe that he's going to remain a starter longer than Sanu. But either way, between these two guys, if they don't perform, you just cut bait with them. You just you let them go. Not a big deal. 
The great thing about drafting guys this late is that you don't really have to worry about it. If they're not good, they're the first guys that get kicked off your team, and then you just go out there in the free agency market, and you get the best guy that's available, the guy who's shown that he can do it, or a guy who just somehow came into a situation that is something that you can't pass up. So that's what I think about Kenny Britt. And let's move on to number four. Number four, we have Kelvin Benjamin, a rookie wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. And he is average draft position right now at, at his position is 49th. So he is, again, a guy who is going undrafted in many leagues. 49th uh, in a 12-team league, he should be drafted in every league at this point. But in some of the the smaller leagues, he's going undrafted still. And I, I am absolutely surprised by that because Kelvin Benjamin looks amazing. First of all, he's a physical specimen. I mean, the dude is six foot five and 240 pounds. He's bigger than Calvin Johnson. Bigger than Calvin Johnson. I'm not saying that he has more talent than Calvin Johnson. Do not get me wrong. Do not mix those words up. But he has an incredible wingspan. He is a big, big dude. And I think that that is going to play right into Cam Newton. Because Cam Newton has some accuracy issues. Let's be completely honest. Let's call a spade a spade. The guy is physically talented. He can make plays with his feet. But the accuracy with his arm has not yet developed. And I think that Kelvin Benjamin is the kind of guy who, replacing Steve Smith in the offense as... He's, pers- he's expected to be the wide receiver one in this offense, and he will be replacing Steve Smith, who was basically a midget at the wide receiver position, and uh, I think that that is going to be helpful to Cam Newton. Maybe not right off the bat because the two still have to develop chemistry, but I think by the end of the season, you're going to be seeing Calvin Benjamin scoring touchdowns. You're going to see him being very clearly this team's best target in the passing game and potentially a guy who could be an every week starter in fantasy football if things go the way they they could. The great thing about Kelvin Benjamin that we've seen this preseason is that he has already performed. In week two of the preseason, he had 41 yards. Uh, Week three of the preseason, he had 47 yards. And in week four of the preseason, he had 56 yards receiving. Uh, And then, of course, in week one, he did catch a 29-yard touchdown reception. So every week of the preseason, even in limited time, he was productive. Can't really argue with that. We like to see it. That's the only thing that right now we don't really know is whether or not he has the consistency to get open and that kind of thing. But I think that, like I said, in the in the small amount of time that he's played, he has performed very, very well. I like him a lot this year. I am trusting him as a wide receiver three in one of my leagues that I am paying in. So I am that confident in Kelvin Benjamin. I think he should absolutely be a target for everybody. In fantasy football this year. Don't draft him too high, but make sure that you look him over. If there are other guys on the board that you can't pass up, I understand, but if there are a bunch of guys that just don't really have much upside and you're just kind of picking a name that you know, don't do that. Look for a guy like Kelvin Benjamin who can give you some upside. Another guy who can give you some upside is my number three receiver on this list, and that is Justin Hunter of the Tennessee Titans, who is average... Uh, whose average draft position, excuse me, is 48th at the wide receiver position, so one ahead of Kelvin Benjamin. Justin Hunter is another guy who has absolutely torn it up this preseason. Uh, He isn't quite as consistent because in the first game he didn't do as well, but in the second game he had 111 yards and two touchdowns on four receptions against the Saints. Then in week three he had 48 yards and in week four 53 yards. His average catch this season, er, this preseason, his average yards per reception is 21.7. That is a ridiculous number. He is a big, big play wide receiver. And if Jake Locker can stay healthy and Kendall Wright can make plays underneath and, and be a, the excellent possession receiver that we all expect him to be, Justin Hunter could absolutely be the guy that blows the top off the defense. I have Tennessee fans like my friend X Ryan 915 telling me this guy reminds me of Randy Moss. And I'm not willing to go that far, but Justin Hunter has a lot of physical skill. He is a bigger receiver as well. He is actually six foot four and 200 pounds. A lot of people don't realize that. They kind of think that he's just like a, a smaller, wiry guy. He's not. He's built to be a guy who can go over the middle as well. But I think his big 
advantage is that he is so tall and he's quick as well. He is going to beat receipt or cornerbacks deep. He is going to make some big, big plays this season so long as he stays healthy. And whether or not that ends up being consistent fantasy production uh, is anybody's guess at this point. But there are going to be some weeks where Justin Hunter has monster games. I absolutely like him, and I think as him going off the board as the 48th receiver, uh, that is tremendous value for a guy that has such upside. Next on the list is another rookie wide receiver, and that is Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this guy is shooting up draft boards. The, when I looked this up, his ADP was 47th at the wide receiver position. I suspect that that might be a little bit higher now. Um, not tremendously higher, but maybe five spots or so higher. And again, this is on ESPN, but Mike Evans has been uh, the talk of the training camp for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. He has been an absolute monster. Um, There really isn't a whole lot to dislike about his game on the field. He's a huge guy, just like Kelvin Benjamin. He's six foot five, 231 pounds. He's big, he's fast, he's strong, and he's playing across from another great big wide uh, target like Vincent Jackson. So he is going to have some awesome matchups because the opposing team's number one corner is always going to be on Vincent Jackson. And that means that Mike Evans is going to be up against lesser talented players, and he is going to definitely be able to exploit their smaller sizes in a lot of these teams. So I I do like Mike Evans. I think that he has the potential, again, I hate to use that word too much, but he has the potential to be a very, very nice compliment to Vincent Jackson. And with Josh McCown going there to Tampa, a guy who succeeded with two big, tall physical receivers in Chicago last year, I think that this is a great matchup. I think that Mike Evans going number seven overall in the NFL draft tells us that Tampa Bay is invested in him. He has won the job already to be the starting wide receiver, and the only real thing that I see keeping him off the field is if for whatever reason he makes some stupid decision, like we've already seen a little bit out of him, that gets him in trouble off the field. I do not want to see that out of Mike Evans. He needs to stay out of trouble, and if he does, I think that he has some serious potential to be a fantasy option this year. Last on the list is a guy who was very quietly very, very productive this past season, and that was Julian Edelman of the New England Patriots. Now, Julian Edelman led all New England Patriots with 105 receptions for 1,056 yards and six touchdowns. This is without Wes Welker in the offense. This is without Rob Gronkowski, without Aaron Hernandez, It it was basically Julian Edelman. Oh, and also Shane Vereen was injured as well. I mean, these guys were depleted as all hell on offense. And it meant that a guy like Julian Edelman, who had never caught more than 37 passes in a season in his four-year NFL career prior to this, he was able to step up as the number one wide receiver for Tom Brady. And that is something that I think we really, really, really need to think about because Julian Edelman is the only guy in this offense right now, sans Rob Gronkowski, who we don't know when he's going to be back. All in, all reports are that he's going to be back in week one, but there isn't anything official yet. And we have we heard those rumors last year, and he didn't play till way later in the season than that. So uh, again, Julian Edelman is the only guy in this offense, really, that has a whole lot of rapport with Tom Brady. And I think that will go a long way. Tom loves to throw to the guys that he's comfortable with. He doesn't have a Randy Moss this year. He doesn't have a Wes Welker this year. And Danny Amendola... For all the the hype that he had when he came over from St. Louis, people were taking him as a, a, a borderline wide receiver one in fantasy last year. And he was injured, like many of us expected, it was a possibility very early in the season, ended up not really playing. But the important thing to think about is that Danny Amendola was not playing in the Wes Welker quote-unquote role in this offense. He was playing outside a lot more than people think he was. I think that it's very possible that the team's wide receivers this year could include Danny Amendola on the outside, Julian Edelman on the inside as as your slot receiver, and then, of course, Rob Gronkowski playing tight end if he's healthy, and then either Kembrell Tompkins or Aaron Dobson on the outside on the opposite uh, side of the field. That could be your four uh, pass catcher set in this offense, of course, with Shane Vereen out of the backfield as well. And if that happens... 
I think that it's very possible that Julian Edelman has another really nice season. I don't believe that he's going to pull in 105 receptions again, and if he did, he would unquestionably be going higher than this. But even if he catches only 85 to 90 passes, his ADP of 25 at the wide receiver position is way too low. He he has the potential, at least in PPR leagues, to be a very, very consistent wide receiver, and that is difficult to come by. He's not going to be the guy who leads the league in touchdowns. He's probably not going to be the guy that leads the league in yardage, but he could be up there in receptions. And that in a PPR league cannot be forgotten. We can get tremendous amounts of consistency out of guys who catch six, seven passes a game. And that's what Julian Edelman has the capability of doing in this offense. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. Don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I missed anybody on my sleepers list here at the wide receiver position. And if you have any questions or anything that I can help you with with fantasy football, make sure to drop that in the comment section below. I'd be glad to help you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.